So in the last video, we have seen how to use collection and the problem with collection interface is it doesn't support index numbers. There's one more issue with without having, with, I mean, if you don't have index number. Example, let's say if I want to add the element. So let's say I have, I already have a value which is four, six and nine. And I want to add the element in between. So let's say I want to add the element somewhere after six. So before nine, so if I want to add two but it should be added before 9. So it should be 4, 6, 2 and 9. We cannot do that because it doesn't have the index number. I cannot specify the location. So in that scenario, instead of using collection, we can use one more interface, which is list. And if you import the package, so you can see it, it is still, it, it, it is working here. And if you go to list interface, so list is an interface which extends collection. So list has all the features of collection plus list, right? And, but will this work at a list here? So if you go to a list class, so it's a class, you can see it's a, what is that? It's a class which implements list. So actually a list is not implementing collection. A list implements list. Since list extends collection, so indirectly, add a list implements collection. So it's an indirect implementation you have here. So we can also use list here instead of using collection. The advantage is, in list, we have a method called as add, which works with index numbers. So we can specify the index number as 2, and the element itself is 2. So index number is 2, element is 2. Why index number 2 is because this is 0, this is 1, so I, I want to add two after six, right? So it should be it should be two. So we got four, six, two, and nine. Okay. So that's how you add the elements. You say so you can you can say we got two after six and before nine. So that means list support index numbers. Now we can also use iterator with list. There's no issue with that. Uh, but we are not that good with iterator, right? We are happy with for loops. So since we see since, since list support index number, we can use a normal for loop here. So let me delete this part, iterator removed. Let me use a normal for loop. Again, you can see there are some certain warnings here. Uh, this warning will be removed once we talk about generics topic. So let's talk about uh, collection. We'll move to generics later. So let me use a normal for loop. We'll start with zero as usual, and we'll go till. Okay, I want. I know the size, so we'll go for four and we'll say i++. plus plus. But my concern is what if I don't know the size? What I can do is we can say values dot size. So we have a method in the collection which is size. We have seen that in collection interface, right? So we got size and now we can print all the values. So how do we print that? We say system dot 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 print and we'll say values dot. So there's a method called as get in which you can specify the index number. This is not there in collection interface if you remember. And if you specify the index number as i and if you run this code, we'll be getting all the values. So we can use normal for loop. But in array, if you remember, we have also talked about enhanced for loop. Can we use enhanced for loop here? Let's do that. Let's say for, oh, before that, I have one more thing. Let me remove this two also. We have four, six, and nine, right? So if you talk about normal array, so array is a specific type of elements, right? We have integer values, we have string values. If we have an array of integers, we cannot have string there. We cannot have float there. We cannot have double there. But in case of list, we can have any type of value, right? We can also say values dot, values dot add. We can even add a normal value, which is a string value. I can, I can add two. So I'm adding a number two, but it is string format. Even that works. That means this value will support any type of value. Maybe your integer, string, all the values. So basically, when you talk about list, it's a list of objects. This is not a list of integers. This is not a list of a float or string. It is a list of objects. Now, since this four and six, they are it, it, they look like a number, but those things are actually a wrapper class object. So this is this four is not int four. This is a integer four. I, feel, I hope you remember the wrapper classes. So this this four. So indirectly, you are you are imagining that it is int four. But that's not int four. It is integer. So you can you can imagine this in the back end. This is integer v equal to new integer, and you are passing four. 
So you are actually passing the object here of integer. So this 4 is not a normal 4, it's an object of integer. This is object of integer, this is object of integer, this is object of string. So basically you are passing all objects. In fact, if you see the method add, if you see the method add, you can see it is showing you the object here. So it only takes objects. So that means we have the list of values of objects. So we can use a enhanced for loop here. But the type of elements we it is not int, it is object. So we can, we can say object O colon coming from values. And now we can print O here. Even that will work. Let me remove this loop now. And if I run this code, and you can see we got all the values. We got 4, 6, 9, and 2. So we can also use enhance for loop. So this is how you use a list of elements. In the next video, we'll talk about the generics and then we'll move towards the other things in collection. That's it. That's it from this video.